Welcome back to Sikistan and welcome back to me talking about uh, technical analysis and weightlifting, which is one of my favorite things to do and think about. Today we're looking at someone a little bit different is Craig Ritchie on YouTube. So he's Team Ritchie, I think, on YouTube. He is a British crossfitter who has switched to race who has switched to weightlifting currently for I think it's the the British Nationals. I'm not sure if he's made a permanent switch to weightlifting or it's just a temporary goal he's doing. So he is been weightlifting recently. You know, he's a very popular YouTuber. So obviously, you know, a great a great name to pick up on and just nitpick a little bit on his snatch technique. Clean jerk technique is very, very good. Clean technique is quite good and his jerk is good as well. Uh, there's one thing he does in his snatch though, and it's kind of the reason I wanted to use him as an example, is it's a very, very common issue or very common fault point that a lot of people make, especially kind of amateur weightlifters in the start position of the snatch specifically. So you might notice in some of Craig's snatch videos or in some of his snatch sessions, he starts with his hips really low. So he's almost, he's basically sitting on his ass. He's sitting in the bottom of a squat in the start position. In weightlifting, this is known as the Hungarian start. It was named so in something the 1970s by one of the Soviet researchers. I assume from one of the Hungarian weightlifters using it frequently. Uh, it's known as a Hungarian start. The characteristics of the Hungarian start is a back that is inclined to vertical in the start position and a large flexion in the ankle and knee joint. Now you'll notice some notable weightlifters in the elite weightlifting section doing it. Quite a few female Asian weightlifters will do it. Uh, Guo Husing Chung uses it. I feel like I'm not saying her name right, but that's how I say it in my head. Uh, Sorab Big Daddy Moretti uses it, one of the most successful users of that, snatching 205 kilos and training as an overweight 94, 96, so quite a successful use of it. So there's a couple of advantages of that, but there's mostly for our kind of amateur to intermediate weightlifters, it's mostly disadvantages of the Hungarian start. So let's start with why in general we see amateur intermediate athletes using it as opposed to why we see maybe more elite level athletes using it. So why we see kind of the amateur and intermediate athletes using it is it feels very, very comfortable. Now, this is one of those issues with weightlifting is that a comfortable position in weightlifting generally does not mean that something is positive and it's not positive for your weightlifting. It's a very easy mistake to make. Something feels comfortable, so we assume that that is a better starting position or a better position to be in in weightlifting. But unfortunately, the comfortability of a position is irrelevant and is not a good indicator if a position is productive for weightlifting. Really what we should be looking at is mechanically advantageous positions and they to conform to a good technical model rather than how we feel in them. Sometimes, thankfully, a better position feels better and that's great and it's very, very useful and you'll see when you're coaching people, you'll say, try this, they'll try it and it immediately feels better and you've all tried things like this. You use a different cue and something feels great and that's phenomenal when that happens. But a lot of the time, or as often as not in weightlifting, a position that feels good often is kind of irrelevant. In a more optimal start position where our hamstrings are parallel to the floor or slightly above that depending on our anatomy, we have a lot of tension on our quads and a lot of tension in our back. So quite an even distribution, which is kind of what you should be looking for in a good start position. But if your legs aren't the strongest, if you're not back squatting well in excess of what you're snatching, if your ratios aren't on the more favorable side, this high level of tension in that start position can feel quite uncomfortable. It can also feel not so natural. And so without even being aware of this, we kind of tend towards that lower start position, which is not, again, it's not ideal. Sometimes we'll see lifters with knee pain. Now I know Craig has some knee tendonitis and this is probably one of those reasons he finds it more comfortable to start at the bottom because there is less shear force on our knee joint because 90 degrees provides the most shear force on our knee joint so sitting at the bottom of that squat is probably taking a lot of the pressure off his knees and would make sense so you don't want to hold that painful position for as long as possible and then we know lifting in pain and weightlifting can significantly alter our movement patterns to the negative so he's probably subconsciously or maybe consciously avoiding that position in a pain-free manner or pain less pain manner but why is it not so advantageous for most people and why can it put us in a position where we're not really ideal when we want to be lifting the barbell so the first place to start with the issues with the hungarian start or very low hip start is that 
first of all, we just don't get much of a dynamic start. So in weightlifting, we've got the dynamic start and we've got a static start. Some people with a very aggressive dynamic start would be people like Ilya Ilian or and people with a very strong static start would be someone like Tian Tao. So the positives at the dynamic start and really what we want most people to be doing is you can apply a more force with a dynamic start so pre-stretched muscles can apply more force immediately after they've been pre-stretched and that's one of the advantages we take advantage of the stretch shortening cycle in our dynamic start and weightlifting and you can apply more force to the barbell over a shorter period of time which is much better for us in weightlifting because weightlifting is all about the expression of our strength as fast as possible when we use the hungarian start we don't get to use much or any of a dynamic start so we're essentially starting from a static position which for most people unless you're like Maradic for example and you're squatting 320 kilos plus probably not you're losing the potential to use more force uh, with less effort almost so that's one of the kind of more important and kind of uh, notable disadvantages of the hungarian start the next is that in the Hungarian start, after we've initiated the movement of the snatch, after we've started the lift, we have a high period of time where our legs are overcoming a mechanically disadvantaged position to get the barbell moving. So when we start with our hips really low, there's a long period of time where our hips are shifting up and our shoulders are shifting forward and the barbell is not actually moving. Now, you might say, oh, but surely the dynamic starts, we're doing a lot of movement as well before the movement starts. And that's a good question if you thought of that. If you didn't thought of that, don't worry, there'll be questions later. So when we do that in the dynamic start, we're generating force and we're pre-stretching muscles. However, when we're starting with our hips very low in the, the Hungarian start, we're not really generating force. We're just overcoming a mechanically disadvantaged position. There's a lot of work going on before any movement of the barbell goes. So one, it's a little bit harder to get the barbell moving. It's a little bit of wasteful of energy, it's wasteful of energy. And we're putting ourselves into, we're coming out of a disadvantaged start position to get into a more advantageous start position. So as you would have seen from previous tactical videos I've done, most notably the start position, the knee passage, and we'll be moving on to the second pull in future videos. So we've talked about how the barbell needs to move backwards off the floor and a lifter's knees need to essentially move backwards off the floor and our shoulders move in front of the barbell. So when we sit in that start position in the kind of lower hip start position, we end up with our knees in a very forward flex position. So we have a larger forward movement of our shin. We have a larger angle knee. We have a larger angle in our ankle. So what this is doing is kind of forcing the barbell almost or our body to go in the opposite direction. You are setting things up to tip forward rather than get an advantageous movement backwards of the barbell. So this kind of while well, doesn't necessarily mean it's impossible for you to move the barbell back off the floor, if you think your shins would start close to vertical and then move backwards or slightly inclined of vertical, if you think about if they're very far forward inclined of vertical and we need to get that barbell moving straight back off the floor, there's a lot of moving parts in that start position. So we need to go from the very, very bottom of a squat essentially, so fully flexed knees essentially, so it's as far forward as our knees can get in most circumstances, nearly all the way back to 180 or most likely it's about 165 to 170 degrees in the snatch so we have to go from full flexion all the way to nearly full extension of our legs in a very 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 short period of time so literally the period of time from when the barbell's on the floor to just below knee level or as the barbell is past your knee level so this is a very short period of time it's a period of time when we want to be making sure our bar and shoulder are in the correct position we want to make sure the barbell is starting in the correct position and all the issues that come around from not having those starting in the correct position so when we sit with those hips really low there's a lot of moving parts and you'll be quite inconsistent and not only can it be inconsistent, but you're also putting in a position where you have to overcome a lot more positions mechanically to get into that correct position when there's no particular advantage for most lifters other than the feeling of comfortability. But this then kind of keeps that weight forward. And what you'll see with a lot of lifters who use the Hungarian start is we'll start with that very vertical back and our knees will be flexed and then they will never really hit that desired level of extension in their legs. And they'll might be, they might get to like 150 or 160. Now, in weightlifting, these degrees of separation are quite significant. It can make all the difference of a lift. So a lot of times you'll see with kind of amateur lifters is they will miss a barbell out front, or if they're quite talented, they will end up chasing a barbell very far forward a lot. So 
one of these kind of uh, those characteristics of that Hungarian start is we do see the barbell almost always ending up in front of the lifter or we will often see the barbell lifter swinging the barbell around and missing it behind because that barbell is in front of them it's front of them as they pass their knees and as they bring their hips forward it kind of swings around behind them now you'll also notice from Craig's videos just kind of bring this back to his lifting you'll see from some of his snatch videos he actually starts with his hamstrings parallel to the floor in a more typical fashion and you'll see his lifts are a lot better whereas you'll see in some cliffs he'll start with his hips really low and you will see that he kind of often chases the barbell forward it might have a little bit more swing in the barbell so it is you know kind of a self-defeating start position for most people some people it works quite well of course and they are mostly world record holders and we should praise them and look at them and say that's great but for everyone else you should probably look at it and going okay so this is not ideal for most of us i need to be starting with our hamstrings kind of parallel to the floor quite a bit of even distribution between our quads and our back and our legs and our back and this way then we can use the most optimal lifting and the most advantage position the most consistent position and maybe get the best lift most consistently hope you like that video um craig if you do watch the video best luck in your competition or best luck to everyone else in any way the competition you might be doing or anyone else doing the british sh 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 british nationals um yep let me know if you've tried the start position in the comments or if you've noticed yourself doing this give it a go if it isn't working for you and if you feel yourself doing it change it to something else and see if it works a little bit better and see if you get more consistent with the weights you're using